A disclaimer before we start, all of my sources are in the description below. I'm currently attending Job Corp, so I will post more videos when I actually have a computer to use. I will make videos about the individual ships in the V-25 class down the line. I'll be doing videos about the ships of the German Empire to the Kriegsmarine. I'll start with the ships at the start of the Industrial Revolution, then move to the end of the Cold War. There will be videos about other topics mixed in too. This is purely out of passion. I get excited just thinking about these videos. I know people don't like AI voices. I don't use my real voice because one, I don't have a subscription yet. Two, I'm not good at voiceovers at all. Three, I'm not comfortable having my voice out there. I have a stutter, ADHD, and a learning disability, which makes it harder. Sometimes I think I have autism. I can be nuts in real life, which makes people around me think I'm on drugs. But no, I just have a lot of energy inside. The point of my videos is to learn something not to be entertained. So enjoy the video, like and subscribe, and always keep learning. A new breed of destroyer. Introducing the V-25 class, a revolutionary step in naval warfare. The ship was meticulously constructed by A.G. Vulkanstettin, a renowned shipbuilding company in the German Empire. The V-25 class was ordered on April 1st, 1913, launched on January 29th, 1914, and commissioned on June 27th, 1914. Germany, seeking dominance on the seas, needs a more powerful and versatile torpedo boat. In response, they design the V-25 class, a marvel of engineering and naval design. The V-25 class represents a significant upgrade from older torpedo boats, featuring advanced technology and improved firepower. Characteristics and machinery are the hallmarks of the V-25 class boats. The engineering behind the V-25 is a marvel of naval architecture and design. The boats of the V-25 class varied in dimensions, and they gradually increased in size as more vessels were built. The boats were 77.80 to 82.50 meters, 255 feet 3 inches to 270 feet 8 inches, long at the waterline and 78.50 to 83.10 meters, 257 feet 7 inches to 272 feet 8 inches, long overall. They had beam of 8.32 to 8.36 meters, 27 feet 4 inches to 27 feet 5 inches, and a draft of 2.80 to 3.90 meters, 9 feet 2 inches to 12 feet 10 inches. Their displacement ranged from 812 to 960 metric tons, 799 to 945 long tons, as designed, and from 971 to 1,188 tons, 956 to 1,169 long tons, at full load. A testament to their robust construction, these are big, powerful boats designed to dominate the seas. The V-25 class boats were propelled by a pair of AEG Vulcan steam turbines, manufactured by the shipyard that built each boat. Steam was provided by three oil-fired water tube boilers. They generate immense heat crucial for their operation. These were the first German torpedo boats to be fueled only by oil, with no provision for coal. The boat's engines were rated at 33.5 to 34.5 knots, 62.0 to 63.9 kilometers per hour, 38.6 to 39.7 miles per hour, from 24,000 shaft horsepower, 18,000 kilowatts, though most of the ships significantly exceeded these figures, in some cases by almost three knots. The boats had storage capacity for 220 to 338 tons, 217 to 333 long tons, 243 to 373 short tons of fuel oil. As a result, cruising radius varied significantly from 1,080 to 1,810 nautical miles, 2,000 to 3,350 kilometers, 1,240 to 2,080 miles at 20 knots, 37 kilometers per hour, 23 miles per hour, with the first dozen boats having the least endurance. The V-25 class boats are exceptionally fast for the time each vessel was equipped with a pair of 28 kilowatts, 38 horsepower, 110 volt turbo generators for electrical power. Steering was controlled with a pair of rudders, the primary at the stern and a secondary retractable rudder located in the bow. 
Armed and ready, the V-25's arsenal. The V-25 class boats are built for attack. They pack a serious punch. They have torpedoes and guns. Each boat initially carried three 88mm 3.5-in SKL-45 guns in single mounts, one forward and two aft, all on the center line. Each gun was supplied with 100 rounds of ammunition. Most of the boats later had these guns replaced with three much more powerful 105mm 4.1-in SKL-45 guns with 70 shells per gun. These guns are powerful. They can hit targets far away. All of the boats carried 650cm 20-in, 533mm torpedo tubes with six torpedoes as their primary offensive armament. These torpedoes are deadly. They can sink large ships. They were also equipped to lay naval mines and each carried 24 mines. During World War I, V-25 briefly had her center gun removed to make room for a Friedrichshafen FF.33 seaplane. Just think a torpedo boat destroyer with a seaplane on it. Crew complement, they had a crew of three officers and 80 enlisted, though some of the boats had an additional two to four sailors. When serving as half-flotilla flagships, the boats would have a flotilla leader's staff of three officers and 13 to 15 enlisted men in addition to the standard crew. Section 4, a step above improvements and significance. As their name might imply, the Type 1913 class Hoxi Torpedo Booty, ocean-going torpedo boats, were designed for the 1913 and 1914 fiscal naval year construction programs of the Kaiserliche Marine, known as the V-25 class. Based on the lead ship, the main goal for their inception was to improve the Type 1911 class torpedo boats, known as the V-1 class, which proved to be disapprovingly ineffective at their intended role. Many improvements were summarily implemented. In comparison to their predecessors, the V-25 class was larger in every dimension to increase overall displacement and ergo increase internal volume and functionality, as well as the vessels moved to using purely oil-firing boilers instead of using more common coal or mix-firing boilers of the time. Despite the greater operating costs, the intended effects were achieved. The class of vessels were able to achieve better cruising capabilities and, in general, obtain better seaworthiness. The transition to oil-firing machinery resulted in higher speeds. In fact, despite the design's specifications rating the propulsion to achieve more than 33 knots, almost every ship was able to exceed that parameter in sea trials. The fastest ships surpassed the benchmark by almost three knots. Furthermore, since the oil firing equipment with smaller than conventional oil and mixed firing equipment, less manpower had to be dedicated to their daily operations. And the space saved could be allotted for more fuel. Hence, the V-25 class achieved greater operation range than that of their predecessors as well. Navies around the world take notice. They start building bigger and better torpedo boats. Section 5, The Great War, the V-25 in action. The V-25 class boats see action in World War I. They are part of the German high seas fleet. They participate in several operations. Over the span of three years, three shipyards would construct 71 Type 1913 Hoxai Torpedo Buta across the Imperial Germany. As per the serialized procedure of the Kaiserliche Marine, the ships were numbered according to the yard that built them. There were minor differences between each yard series, so some references list each such series as a separate type. Strictly speaking, the 1913 series consisted only of V-25 to V-30 and S-31 to S-36 ships, but the later ones listed here were quite similar, though increasing in displacement. The German practice in peacetime was to build one flotilla of similar ships per fiscal year, hence the name 1913 series. Later ships belonged to the 1914 series, G37 to V84, and 1915 series, G85 to G95. During the war, the armament of most of these ships was upgraded, with 88mm guns replaced with 105mm guns. For example, SMS V25 was the 25th torpedo, boat built by AG Vulkanstettin. V25 to V30, V43 to V48, V69, V71 to V74, V78, and V80 to V82. 
all built by AG Vulcan at Stettin V67, V68, V70, V75, V76, V77, V79, V83 and V85 by AG Vulcan at Hamburg G37 to G42 and G85 to G95 built by Germania Werft at Kiel, S31 to S36 and S49 to S66 built by Schichau at Elbing. They demonstrate the variety of the V25 class. Section 6, Legacy of the V25, Fates and Impact. The V25 class boats serve until the end of the war. Germany loses the war, marking a significant turning point in naval history. These 71 torpedo boats would go on serving in the high seas fleet during World War I. Despite the British naval blockade of Germany, many of the ships saw service in the English Channel, the North Sea and especially the Baltic. Some participated in the Battle of Jutland, to a total of 32 were lost before the armistice, including many lost to mines in the Baltic. Vi-43 was scuttled at Scarpa Flow, but later raised and repaired. She was taken over by the US Navy and commissioned for a brief period in 1920, then sunk as target on the 15th of July 1921. Two ships of the class, V-44 and V-82, were turned over to the Royal Navy following World War I. They were towed to Portsmouth Harbour where they were used for target practice. Subsequently, they were intentionally beached on the southern tip of Whale Island. Their remains are still there today. 62 would be lost over the course of the war. 32 sunk during combat in the North and Baltic Seas. 29 would be scuttled with the German fleet in Scarpa Flow. One was destroyed by a mine on the way there. The remaining five were given off as War Respirations.4 were given to Britain and were not scuttled while one was given to France and Italy. The V-25 class has a lasting impact on naval design, influencing future generations of warships. Their size, speed and firepower set a new standard, pushing the boundaries of naval engineering. The V-25 class is a reminder of the rapid evolution of naval technology. Showcasing the advancements made during the early 20th century, it is a testament to German engineering, highlighting their prowess in creating formidable warships. The V-25 is an important part of naval history, representing a significant chapter in the story of maritime warfare.